when you die and you look back, you know, as you're on your deathbed and you consider the value that you've created over the trajectory of your life, what will that value consist of? And it is not a question of success. It's a question of value creation and kind of deep impact for one having lived a life. And that really is what this conversation is about. And we can create all kinds of complexities around the execution, the definition, the term, the metrics. And at the end of the day, it's simply about how do you live your life to the fullest and how do you do that without creating greater costs to the person next to you or to the community next door or to the country across the ocean from you. And, and this really is the, the, the phenomenal opportunity that I think the impact conversation has brought forward. Uh, because it's not simply a question about how do you manage your assets. It's not just about how do you invest effectively. It's about how do you mobilize the total resources at your disposal in order to have had the greatest, deepest impact for your having lived a life. And that to me is just what it's all about. As this field has grown and most recently gone into almost uh, a uh, hyper growth, is that taking the word social venture capital, which we used to call it, out of this and using the word impact seems to have broadened the tent. Just say to everyone that this is probably one of the most important things we all need to focus on as human beings right now. If we don't turn around the way we do business, we will be in a lot of difficulty. So I think this is probably one of the most important things we all need to come together as humanity and look at how do we scale the change and really truly screw business as usual. This is the next major stage of maturity for social responsible business and investment and indeed all business and all investment. In a period where everything else blew up, I had solid performance. And that's really what inspired me to start Impact Assets and say, this can work financially. And the reason why more people aren't doing it is just because we don't have an awareness campaign and an ecosystem and an infrastructure to help them do it. Wanting to figure out how you could also get capital into an area where the problems dwarfed the amount of capital available. If you think of all of the grant money on the planet that's available, it is much smaller than the needs that are out there. So to me, it seemed logical to try to tap into other kinds of money. And to me, commercial money makes a lot of sense. There are inventors. There are the folks who have always driven the economy. Um, they are the job creators. Um, and they will build things that none of us can imagine. Um, so we've, our last gathering brought together 125 people representing for over 4.5 trillion in assets. So most of our folks, you know, come at least with 25 million overall that they're managing and are trying to figure out how to, how to put it to work. The creating of a space where people can uh, safely invest in changing the world and make sure they still have their retirement money left is uh, is really the you know the end goal of the the uh, the mission of impact investment civil rights movement it changed the thinking of us all all right so we need a common good movement time to get up off your assets and really look at our relationships with money and and demand that our money go to things that matter and that we want to tell our children about and that will enable seven generations and 500 years more of this beautiful thing we have being alive on the planet. And what we do is we make a virtually indestructible soccer ball that we find ways to get them into inner cities, war zones, refugee camps, places all around the world where play and sport are important to the health, well-being, and education of kids. Our niche is providing housing for workforce families. It's a, we, we feel it's a impact, socially responsible investment arena, and we're trying to do it in a, in a major way. ROG is a, it's a consulting company working with major international corporations in the resource industry, oil and gas, mining, agriculture, as well as defense and aerospace. What are we doing in the, the social area in terms of our corporate social responsibility initiatives? We want to take a, a next step and partner with an organization and, and we selected IDE. Uh, what we now call impact investment, is a desire to blend, to integrate 
a commitment to business discipline, to profitability, to wealth creation, to building successful, high-performing business enterprises with a commitment to, to doing good. That's what we want to do in, in Zambia, is go, we have the RLG Farm Business Advisory Program. And the focus is on the individual, the farmer, and getting him through and say, you know, maybe we should try something different than what you've done in the past, because if you do these things in terms of irrigation, or seeding, or fertilizer, you can make additional profits for your family. RLG is investing in a new model that can really crack food security, access to water, increasing livelihoods for smallholder farmers in all of Africa. Clearly the two twin challenges are reaching scale and the finding ways to make last mile distribution not just self-sufficient but profitable. We have something called RSF pricing meetings where we bring together the, those who have put money with us and those who have borrowed money from us. Uh, we, we bring them together once a quarter in a particular region of the country and we have a sampling of those investors and a sampling of the borrowers and we actually have them speak to each other on what they believe is a fair price. And we are involved in cocoa production, rehabilitating abandoned cocoa farms and through that providing employment opportunity to farmers and soldiers, aggregating cocoa beans from the Afro coast and surrounding countries. Actually the biggest opportunity of our lifetime is creating businesses that drive change and how can we take that opportunity and start to share these stories of these wonderful businesses that are starting to merge right now, whether they be purpose driven, whether they be social enterprise, and using those voices of those people who have created these businesses as heroes and starting to put them out there to encourage lots of other people to follow in their footsteps. We we develop technology for solar applications and carry out rural electrification programs in, in Mexico to promote development through energy access. This evening is not just a celebration, it's a call to action. And we can, with a little help from our friends, transform the way the world does business. And that's what Social Venture Network is all about, is getting the best and brightest people and ideas together and figuring out the most creative, most innovative ways of solving economic problems and supporting people and the planet. Women have a unique role to play in impact investing. And this is a picture that we haven't seen ourselves in. And it's time to change that picture. We work with women from backgrounds of trauma and abuse and we teach them how to make fashionable, creative, and fun, eco-friendly clothing that we sell in Cambodia and abroad. I think there's a very positive future for impact investing, and I think we're going to see increasingly, particularly individuals, but also endowments and foundations looking at what impact their investments are having and trying to do more alignment of the values or mission of the organization. Uh, you know, what happens to a dream that's deferred? Uh, what options do people have if they want to change the world through this route um, and they aren't explored in marginalized places around the world? Call it somewhere in between uh, micro lending and bankable loans. There was a space that was missing and so if you could finance these businesses, let's say a coffee cooperative in Nicaragua that didn't have access to capital markets, suddenly you could improve the lives and livelihoods of all of the folks in that village and you know when you visit suddenly the second time they've got nurses and they've got art classes and that uh, these unprecedented fiscal um, uh, times can also be a time for uh, thinking about new opportunities to address social problems. Um, Virgin Unite, we're the not-for-profit foundation of the Virgin Group and we're really like a catalytic engine that looks at how do we get R80 businesses and other businesses to really put people and planet at their core and how do we create new ways of approaching global leadership. Which is most important in the impact arena is you have to supply financial returns, strong financial returns. And if you do that, then you can address the second and third metrics of triple bottom line returns, and that's the socially responsible plus the environmentally responsible aspect, sustainable investments. Uh, the Social Investment Forum, uh, CIF, uh, the U.S. CIF, they do a biannual report 
and they go in and do a scan of what's going on in the social ESG impact world. And in their latest report, they are saying that these strategies st stand at about a $3 trillion type of dollar amount. We've had a great crew. We've had folks from the White House, folks from the State Department, folks from the UN, and then we've had you know, the president of the Gates Foundation, the president of the Rockefeller Foundation, of the Midiar Network that's put half a billion dollars into the stuff. So I think the, we've been validated by the big dogs in a way that we haven't been before. I think they see SOCAP as a, a way to reach the people who want to move their money toward good. We, just, we really are becoming this market at the intersection of money and meaning that we, that we wanted to be when we started. I've been involved in impact investing for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not even sure how to answer the question because there wasn't a field of either social entrepreneurship or impact investing when I began my work. Now we have over 11% of UBS's assets in SRI, ESG impact, and that's $241 billion. That's a huge dollar amount. Now that's internationally throughout the entire uh, company, but that's real money. Uh, we need some more light, we need some more education and information. And there's disseminating information along different types of media, whether it's online, whether it's social media, whether it's through news, that get out there and tell people what impact investing is to empower them to make decisions for themselves, because that's what it's all about. So the more projects like this that can be done, the better off the world's going to be. That time is now, and we're here, and we're the people that we've been waiting for, and we're the systems that are possible, and this impact investing is the transformation in capital systems that can get us to a sustainable planet and uh, an economic and political system that actually serves people. The media can really celebrate those new hybrid models in the middle that are starting to emerge and celebrate this new way of doing business. Uh, money is like manure. You know, if you pile it up, it stinks, but if you spread it around, it can do a lot of good. And uh, I think that uh, that's not only true philanthropically, it's also true in terms of the whole investment world. That more and more investors are setting aside some of their monies to invest in the younger generation, social innovation, social change. And yes, they want to make some money, but money isn't the driver. Uh, the driver is to see a, a planet you want to hand over to your children.